Go ahead. When can I go for a ride? <laughs> the, the keys are in it. <laughs> no, you drive. Uh, I want to. I guess the best way I can explain it to you, it, it's really almost a lot like uh, if you think about riding on a marshmallow. Um, when the thing goes through the bumps, um, the the 30 inches of wheel travel in the back, you know, 28 in the front. Um, you know, the tires take a lot of the, the load from the ground and, and take a lot of the hit out along with the Fox shocks. But it's a lot like riding on a, on a marshmallow, really. When it jumps, you know, a lot of people, they first get in the truck, um, when they, you go to hit a bump, they go to brace themselves and nothing happens. You just go through and they're like, wow. And then they finally, you know, from being all tensed up, they finally relax and, and settle in. But uh, I've had a lot of people and some good stories with the, the BFG guys. A lot of the guys, when we spend two or three days out in the desert, um, testing you know the guys that, that were working on the tires not all that they would get to go for a ride with me and um, you know you take them in the truck and, and scare the, the heck out of them and uh, but in the beginning they, they have a lot of good stories some of the guys that have ridden in the truck and about going out there and uh, riding with me and uh, another good story was uh, we used to also have a helicopter that would come out and kind of film the action you know trying to to help improve the tires and uh, one of the times going up a fast graded road a rock came off the, the truck and hit the, the bubble of the helicopter and broke it so um, a lot of a lot of good times bf goodrich has been involved in this for a long time you know they're they've been here you know strong all along they've never left they're constantly making better products and uh you know it not only helps on these race trucks these tires are you know obviously for race vehicles but what we learn on that transfers over to a tire like this and it helps uh, the general public get a better tire what's been your biggest challenge as far as uh racing for all these years um well it's uh the biggest challenge um, racing in all these years is uh, in the beginning it was definitely to learn how to slow down and um, you know you can't just go out there and hold the thing wide open uh, you're always up against um, you know with the vehicle that you have and you know to this day I can still um, go out there and try if I drive the truck as hard as, as I can drive it um, it probably won't make it so um, the biggest challenge is, is staying within the elements of the truck that you have and, and the desert and not you know going out there and overdriving and tearing trucks up um, you know, these, this truck here has over 800 horsepower and these 39 inch tall BF Goodrich tires. Um, you know, when you're going across the desert, you're holding the thing wide open, um, it's quite abusive on the drivetrain. So you have to, you know, it's, over the years, the transmissions, um, the, the ring and pinions, the axles, everything's been getting bigger, but it's still a growing process. Every year you need to keep trying to improve. Uh, right now, you know, I guess, you know, the, the thing that we need to protect right now is, is drivetrain, really. Um, you need to take care of that. You can't drive it, you know, you know, over 100%. You usually try to save it and uh, wait till the end. A good analogy is in short course racing, they throw the green flag and you need to go as hard as you can right from the green. In desert racing, you take care of the car. And, uh, you know, a little secret that I have is I go as slow as I possibly can to win. So you, you try to keep, you know, everybody within your sight and, um, and uh, not let anybody get away. But uh, in the end, if you're still running good and you didn't use up your vehicle, you may find out that everyone else did and you're the only one left running and you didn't have to uh, push too hard. Where do you like to race better, Mexico or in the States? Well, I, I like racing anywhere and everywhere. Uh, I race to shopping cart, to a trophy truck, anything. So, um, you know, I really love going down to Mexico. Um, my first time down there was in the middle 80s, you know, like I said, pre-run with Walker Evans and uh, just seeing all the different sites that they have down there is a pretty incredible thing that we don't have as much in the States. Uh, certain areas of, of the States has some good things to see, but Mexico, I mean, we get to see the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf, um, you know, up and down the peninsula. There's so many things to see there. And, and actually, um, you know, even though I've been going down there for 20, 20 plus years, um, I still haven't seen a lot. You know, I hear all the stories about all the other stuff and I'm so focused in on going pre-running and learning the race course that I miss all that. So, but there's, Mexico's a, a great place, but anywhere. I, I love racing anywhere. How do you see it at speed? What, excuse me? How do you see it at speed? Concentrate on Horse. Yeah, um, no, that's true. What he's asking is, uh, you know, you, you probably don't see much in Mexico because you're concentrating, and that that is, you know, a, a true thing. Is I'm so focused in on the race course when I'm pre-running. Um, I was talking to a gentleman earlier, and we have GPSs in these trucks nowadays. Um, in the early days, there was none of that, but now there's so many different things that have developed in these trucks, um, and we actually use the GPS, which is a global positioning system. Uh, we get the race course from uh, score. We load it in the GPS, and then 
especially in Mexico, uh, when we're down there pre-running, we're taking notes and we're uh, putting those on the GPS. And what I mean by notes are, is um, you know every corner, any ditch, uh, anything that I decide that we need to, to log into that GPS will have, and it'll be as simple as I'll take you through a little part of the course or give you examples. You're coming down the road in a sand wash, and there's a rock on the left, and we'll write that you know rock on left, you know rock in the center, rock on right, you know ditch, tree, you know, and just the more we go, the more notes we take. So the co-rider um, ends up having a very busy job. He's calling out you know every obstacle that there is in the track. Um, we can't mark them all, but it, it definitely helps and. Uh, you know, uh, like pre-running, why I'm not seeing everything is because I'm looking at the rock, go telling my co-rider to, hey, mark that down, and he uses a, either a voice recorder or writes on a pad of paper, and then at night we go and take the take that and then load it onto the to the chip and load it in, and the next day we go pre-running and, and check our notes, and you just keep doing that day after day. It ends up being where the co-rider's like constantly talking to you, just going, you know, left, left turn coming up, tight left, hard, 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 sweeping left, uh, rock on left, rock on right, things like that. So, you know, there's a, there's really a lot of work to do in this now. In the early days, we just, you know, go out there and, and uh, not quite wing it, but, you know, a lot of stuff that you didn't, you know, know was out there. You just you just went at it and, and took it as it came. It really helps these GPS notes, really help when you're in the dust. If you can imagine, uh, like in the fog, when you're in the dust, you can't even see the road. Well, with that GPS, we're actually looking at the trail that's on the GPS and seeing which way the course turns and kind of driving off that, and uh, it helps quite a bit. With all the advancements, has it really become a different race with the GPS, with the, the travel, with the comfort? Uh, is it Oh yeah, you know the the over the years with all the advancements that have happened in the truck, um, it's definitely changed a lot. I mean, when I started racing, I had no radio in the car, I had uh, no spare tire, no GPS, no power steering, and uh, you know um, nowadays we have we have uh, an electronic Motec dash that's uh, sensing shock temperatures um, and earlier when I was talking about the coolers, uh, we're monitoring those shock temperatures so I only take them to a predetermined amount and then if they start to go above that I need to slow down and keep them within that. Uh, we're monitoring all the temperatures and pressures on the truck, the rear end, we're monitoring the temperature of that and your the co-rider not only with the GPS but he's got to pay attention to all those temperatures. All that stuff's on his side, I can't see any of it so he has to tell me, you know, keep me updated on that stuff and if something's getting too hot we need to slow down a little bit or if everything's good to go we can keep pushing the technology is incredible um you know as with bf gooders tires when we first started racing trophy trucks um you know well at least for me we were on a, a 35 inch tall tire and now uh we're on 39s and they actually have a, a 42 inch tall tire that's out that a few people have uh, ran on. Todd Wiley I ran him in the mid 400 and uh, Nick Vandeway ran him at this last San Felipe race. So the progression is, is never ending and that's the neat thing about this sport. Um, in the trophy truck there's almost no rules. You just can't, fl it can't fly. It needs to stay on the ground. Um, and it's, you know, you see a lot of the other people in other sports, uh, you know, Rob, I'll use Robbie Gordon for an example. You know, he keeps coming back and the reason why is this is some pretty cool stuff and uh, anytime that I get somebody else uh, especially in short course we get some people like Kyle Bush coming out to our race and driving a truck Tony Stewart was just at Chicago and got to drive a truck and those guys are really blown away by what this is in my early career um, just for a couple of months I got involved with when the NASCAR truck series came out and I started doing those that's I was gonna take that path and I, I ran a couple of exhibition races and did a lot of testing and I just said you know what that's not for me it's just going around in circles not that it's not difficult but just so much more in the desert that you know you can you're sliding jumping you know all the different landscape that we see across the you know Mexico and, and the United States here any more questions hey Andrew so Andrew, Cudell, Andrew Cudell over here, he's the uh, 2011 Torque Champion. If you want our autographs, get uh, form a line, and he'll be back about 2 o'clock to speak again. Uh, he's got water right now. What's your name?